in keeping with the fabrication of this little lathe, this is giving me an opportunity to try, or not try, but actually practice a different approach for cutting a specific feature. Now, if you watch the production of this little crank right here, you saw me do the inside with a square file held in a drill chuck and activated up and down like a die filer. It worked out very well. Putting the dial on this is going to be a whole different animal. This square has to be very concentric, very true position to the outside, or when you turn the crank, it's going to look like, uh, you know, it's, it's going to run out, period. It's not going to look like anything. It's going to run out. The dial on the tail stock has the exact same square drive feature. The hand wheel on the carriage has the exact same square drive feature, and so does the lead screw for the cross slide. I'm going to make a brooch this morning really quick for this particular feature right here and for the other hand wheel naturally and for the little brass dial that I'm going to put on that guy right there. Quarter inch diameter high speed steel drill blank. I'm going to hand grind it real quick and then I'm going to put it in a spin indexer in the mill and I've already done a video on this called can you grind on a mill and yes you can. So I'm going to do it again real quick before I brooch out those components. Take a look. My grinder is set up with a coarse wheel on the left and a finer wheel on the right. I will take the majority of the material off of this high speed drill blank on the left hand side, dunking it in between because that is getting quite warm. Trying to keep it concentric, get it over on the fine side and get it down to a manageable diameter that I don't have to grind too much off of on the mill. I'm going to load it up in my spin indexer. The other side of that is a much larger square. This is going to be about an 80 thou, maybe about a two millimeter across the flats square. Using a Norton cup wheel and a homemade arbor, I'll hold this entire assembly in a three quarter collet in my mill. That's all it takes, quarter 20 screw, three quarter collet, here we come. Going to spin this at about 1800 RPM, which is a little slow. This wheel can go to 5800 RPM. Spin indexer in the vise. Raise the heel of the spin indexer just a little bit to put a mild draft angle on the brooch. That way it doesn't drag all the way down. It cuts on the front just a little tiny bit. We're going to reposition the camera here. We're going to look at it from underneath. And it's okay if it's running out like that. You see the eccentricity on the outside of that wheel? It's not a problem. The face is true. And that's all that we're cutting with. These are about ten thousandths of an inch deep passes here. And I'm just going to run it down until I know it will enter the pilot hole that I'm going to put in the material comfortably. And yes, the machine is thoroughly draped at this point. Every conceivable surface is covered up. You don't want this grinding dust flying around your machine. Once you know you have all the corners nice and sharp, I'll lock it off in a specific position and I will use the edge of the wheel to make a small hollow grind on the nose of the tool right there. Done. Looking for an 096 final square. This is a setup piece of brass, so I know that when I get to my real dial, I know what my readings will be on my digital readout. And the easiest way is to just poke into one corner and walk it to the next corner, to the next corner, to the next corner. And I have a lifelong habit of always turning my dials clockwise, so if you see me back out, that's what I'm doing. There's a little look for you with a dental mirror. Makes a nice feature. But it's got to fit the mating part, right? So. Make sure you double check everything. 
and it doesn't take a whole lot for it not to go. The adjustments here are about one thousandths of an inch per surface. Until it just sneaks in. Make sure whatever you make your brooch from, that it's large enough in diameter that it doesn't flex under the load of the cut. I'm going to prepare the stationary and movable dials on the same, or actually on different ends of the same piece of material. Using a common piece of material like this or an extended piece of material like this makes it a lot easier to handle the final product when the final piece is small. Stationary dial is a simple turn to OD with a reamed hole through the center. And the movable dial will be basically the same as this, but we're going to back turn a small diameter on it so that it looks like the lock nut that you would find like on a mill table. It'll be burning. Make sure the gauge pins fit. Always break the OD where the cut terminates. Right there. If there's any flare, it could affect the concentricity of the opposite side of the blank. I'll do the exact same thing. Turn it to the same diameter so the diameters match at assembly. Drill and ream the inside. And plunge cut the back with the parting tool. Make sure your parting tool is rigid enough so that it doesn't flex under the cut and that it's ground correctly to give you a nice square corner. This little counterbore right here is the controlling feature that will terminate the lead screw and square drive features. This is critical, this depth right here. It goes one way or the other. It is very possible that the assembly will pinch and not turn. And once you're happy with the diameter and the depth, deburr everything, move on to the back turn, and take it over to the mill. Give you a quick look at the setup here. If I were doing multiples of this piece, I would have a stop on the stationary vice jaw to hold the V-block in place as well. When you put the parts in the mill, make sure that you indicate everything for a concentric relationship in the features. This is the broaching operation for the movable dial. And there is no rotational relationship required here. This dial will spin so this square can be in any position but for sizing purposes, it's always good to have your brooch in line with the table. So your X and Y moves will give you nice straight edges. Now this face is so small that a visual alignment here is fine. I lay a scale across it and I look at the scale in relationship to one of the jaws. And when I'm content that it's true, we go for it. Always make sure there's sufficient room underneath your tool that you can put your mating piece or a gauge in. That's really a you know, quite a shock when you're working on a critical feature and you need to move the table because you can't get the gauge pin in. I think we've all been there. I know I have. And this is a through brooch operation. That is the critical counter bore that you saw me bore in the previous operation in the lathe. All goes well, the lead screw goes in, and the round diameter engages the bottom of the counter bore, same time the square goes through. That is a control surface, extremely important.
Moving on to the stationary dial, make sure that the concentricity is there since there's no stop on the V block. These are the two anti rotation dowel pin holes that will make sure that this dial does not spin as the lead screw spins through this smaller center bore. And I place these by eye. I think next time I'd place them, I'd place them a little bit closer to the center because they are just about tickling the OD of this part. If this part was any smaller, this would be a scalloped hole, and that's not a good thing. Now I'm drilling it much deeper than it needs to be so the reamer doesn't pack up and this will be parted off in the lathe after the fact. So this is going to be a very small washer but this is just a much easier way to handle it. 063 reamer. Finish off both the holes and the secondary work on this part is basically complete. This is the stationary index dial and it does require a single index mark positioned 180 degrees opposed from those two dowel pins that I just drilled. Now that surface right there is facing the camera and not facing me so this is going to be um, something I have to fiddle with with the mirror so it's easier to film than it is to do. This is a 90 degree high speed steel brooch. I'm coming down in the quill with it. And it's not going down past the shoulder on that part, although it looks like it is, it's not. It's staying well shy of it. I'll creep up on it visually from the side. I only want to go about five to seven deep. And make sure that if you're going to do this, that you do this at the same time you drill those two holes. Because that mark's got to be, got to be opposite those two holes for correct positioning at assembly. This brooch is so rigid and this material is so soft that I literally can't even feel whether or not it's cutting. I have to see if it's cutting. And when I get the depth, I'll put my finger on the back side of it just to see if there's any deflection or movement or uh, contact interference at all. And I can tell you that I didn't feel a thing. <laughs> I didn't feel a thing. This groove will be filled with a black lacquer at assembly so you can see it. Now, so long as it's steep enough to accept the lacquer, the feature is good enough. Try to make it the same width as the lines on the dial, just for visual cosmetics. Nope, no interference. Back in the lathe for the parting operation, I'm setting my tool by dragging my razor blade across the face of the tool and waiting for it to stop clicking against the outside of the parting tool. Zero out the digital and move in your required amount. And I'm going to make a very superficial plunge cut here. Come back with a 45 degree tool and chamfer both of those exposed corners. And finish the parting operation. This is the stationary dial. And I'm using a catch tool that a viewer sent in. I'll see if I can put a link to that particular tool in the video description. Handy little thing to have. Only because this is a scale model, and for no other reason, I'm sure there are 10 different ways to do what I'm about to do, but I'm going to knock this out in the most backwards fashion I can possibly think of because time is of the essence here, and I want to get through this. I have taken the diameter of this particular part, multiplied it times pi, <laughs> coincidentally, to come up with the circumference. That particular length divided by 25 is what I need to do on a OD of this particular wheel right here. 
you cannot get what you need with the graduations that they give you. That being said, white packing paper from the very beginning to the very end is one complete revolution of the face of that spin indexer. I'm going to cut a piece of this off, strip it all the way back to about a quarter of an inch and tape it on. And then I'm going to visually use a pointer and stop on each one of these lines to give me 25 even graduations about the diameter of that small brass dial. And if you don't think I'm serious, well, there you go. Cell spreadsheet gives me all the numbers I need, and I laid it out with a 24-inch vernier. <laughs> so, a little bit of overkill, but I can probably assure you that these lines are going to be very close to accurate. Well, as accurate as my eyes are. So let's shave a piece of this off, tape it to the dial, put some graduations on that little brass thing. go these cuts are going to be incredibly superficial and the rotation will be locked right there let's put in a collet set the machine up put some graduations on that little guy this is the final setup I will be using this is my pointer mechanism here on the side I'm just going to rotate this by eye until the bottom of that tool lines up with the line on the paper. And I'll bet you that it comes out pretty close. If you think about a projected error, when you get down to the little diameter that we actually cut down here versus the space between these lines, those lines are going to be pretty fine. So if I can get these lines pretty much spot on that pointer, we should be in good shape. I'll take a few test cuts uh, at one location because there's no guarantee it will repeat. No, I mean, it's going to repeat as good as my eye. I am using a snap tap internal threading bar to do this. So these are 60 degree V grooves. That is a very fine insert. I'm going to spin that around and show you that. That's the insert that I will be using. It is visually lined up on center with the blank. And all the cutting will be done. I guess maybe I could do it around the front. Let's watch progress as it happens right about this angle here. Okay, let's get on the tripod, finish this like this. Spindle speed is about 1900 RPM for this operation. I'm going about five to seven deep. All the burrs and everything will be shaved off on the lathe after the fact and these grooves will be filled with a black lacquer to match the stationary dial. This is accelerated footage. That is incredibly hard to film. <laughs> As you can see, depth of field is really narrow. All right, let's pop it out, clean it up, and take a better look at it. Yeah, let's see if I can do this with the camera right in my face. These are 062 long dowel pins. Excuse me, 062 diameter. About 1.2 millimeters, excuse me, 1.5 millimeters. This 
see the index mark on the top. Now this is the dial that does not move. Bring the lead screw through from the back. Put the new one on. <laughs> okay, get back here. Here we go. Let's try that again. Well, this guy has to be driven by the screw itself. So that's got the square brooks in it from before. And you can see the lines. As the screw turns, that knob turns. And forgive me for not putting numbers on there. I can just barely see those lines. I will ultimately fill them up with a black lacquer and wipe it off so any, any cutter marks or chatter or whatever will go away. But you can see how nice and uniform that, that turns out doing it that way. That is only about a 5,000 steep scratch right there. That is very superficial. There is a rather critical stack dimension that needs to be hit or when you tighten the crank down, everything will pinch and nothing will move. So that dimension has not been established yet and that is brought in not only by the depth of the square cut in the graduated dial, but the thickness of the stationary dial. That is all adjustable. Let's put this on. Goodness, that is small. The tolerances that I used on my dials are a little tighter than the tolerances they give you for these knobs. There we go. That's squeaking and howling you here in the back. It is an incredibly windy day here in Texas. And that is the big garage doors jumping around and the roof fence. And they are even cinched down as tight as they can get those roof fence. They're still jumping. That took an awful lot of time. It took a full day to do that, in case you're wondering what the real time was here. That's a full day worth of messing around. Generated a couple of drawings. And yes, the handle is still loose. I'm not going to cinch it down because I don't want to gall anything. But I generated a few drawings, made all the parts, made the brooch. And those lines should give you an advancement of the carriage, excuse me, of the cross slide. One thou. Two thousands coming off the diameter for each one of those lines. 25 graduations, 40 threads per inch on the screw. And that's about as good as it gets right there. That's as good as I'm going to get it. That's all we got, guys. Thank you very much for hanging in. This is a fun project, and I appreciate all the comments and feedback. I hope you're well wherever you are in the world. Let's uh, hope 2021 is going to be a great year so far. This has got me distracted to the point where I almost feel human. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Joe Pye Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.